Okay, and the valuations and those, I mean, I don't even know who's like, just today, word is out that finally Twitter made money. 12 years, today is the first day they've been profitable. Okay, and they're valued at, I don't know, it's this obscene number, I don't understand it, but, right? But, not, but, but don't worry about those great big ones. The mid-sized entrepreneurs have figured out the way you make this work, undervalued assets. And we all have lots of them, undervalued assets. One of the young guys in our program, his magic is, is he figured out that in California they have rapidly changing environmental regulations that make it really hard for fleet owners of big trucks to keep their existing models. So they have to turn their fleets over a lot. Guess what? Nebraska has less stringent regulations. He goes to California. He buys them by the fleet load, brings them back to Nebraska, refurbishes them, and sells them. Cannot stay ahead of the demand. 24 years old. Right? He just saw an opportunity, took it. Disrupt the existing model, and we'll talk about some of that. Reimagine the model. Right? Reimagine the model. Existing technology applied in a new way. Right? The greatest example from history of this is incandescent lighting, which was created to create safer shipboard lighting systems because open flames on wooden boats in the middle of the ocean, bad idea. You could put the fire out, but then you were messed up because there was nowhere to go, right? And yet, something came along that actually displaced incandescent lighting on ships, and incandescent lighting gave us what new thing in the world? What was the first real use of incandescent lighting? Night baseball. Now, all of a sudden, you could schedule baseball games when people weren't working. And the Major League Baseball, without night baseball, imagine what that would be like. They would never have created this huge organization that they've created. Recurring revenue not dependent on the founder's direct involvement. The franchising model. And this is the hard one in ranching, right? Because my father, to his dying day, thought any more than 48 hours away from that ranch probably meant that something bad was happening. How many of you are a little bit that way? Everybody, everybody's, yeah, I see people looking at, especially looking at husbands going, <laughs> right? This is one that's hard for us to get our minds around, but it's real. Remember when carrots all looked like that? Reality in the marketplace today. All right? Why? I don't know. Maybe consumers are crazy. But the reality is, is we can disrupt the model, even in the simplest model. Not all carrots are orange. This is just some really cool little things we've seen in the innovation space, right? I mean, you need a cup holder that clips onto the desk. That's kind of cool. Uh, you know, if you're wearing a hoodie and you've got a backpack as a kid, the hood is always jammed up in your neck and stuff, so take the hood off the coat, put it on the backpack. All right? And people get tired of little white styrofoam cups. Let's put some color in them. Let's make furniture out of tires. And let's provide kids affordable desks in places where they can't afford hardly anything using cardboard in a new way. All innovative ideas, right? So what's coming at us? Well, here's what's really interesting. This is the only slide I'll, I'll put up here that's busy and crazy, and it's only because I want to show you down here, and this is McKinsey and Company, one of the world's great consulting firms. They know more about what's going on in the world of business than probably anybody else in the world. And they just did a digitization study of industries. Now, I'm a, little, I'm, I'm a little offended because I think we're a little further along than they think we are. But agriculture and hunting, they put agriculture and hunting together, I guess hunting and gathering, they just seem somehow that fit together for them. Us in construction are not digitized. In other words, we use very little virtual capacity. Which is why all of a sudden there's a lot of interest in us. Right? 
Silicon Valley, that little funny triangle between Palo Alto, Berkeley, and San Francisco is a funny little triangle. A lot of smart people out there. How many ag companies inside that funny little triangle? How many ag companies do you think are there? All tech companies. 25. Other guesses? A couple hundred. A thousand. Really close. It's about 920. Right, 920 companies in existence today in the tech space, most of whom are run by people who have never stepped foot on a farm. Right, Farmers Business Network and Granular, two of the really emerging high-tech, high-information companies. We met the marketing manager at Granular, great young guy, absolutely loved him, from San Diego. Had never been on a farm in his life. He loves working for Granular. He loves the farming community. He loves what he is doing. And I've had farmers say, oh, well, he, well that's the last thing we need. I said, no, man, that, we're attracting brand new talent to our industry through this space. This is a way for us to get people to our industry. Now, we may have to educate them a little, but we can get them in and we can find new talent. That's what's powerful here. But that's really interesting, right? So we're, a, we're, a, we're an industry ripe for some change, for some technology. Now, oh, and I want to put this right out there. Technology does not make you irrelevant. Even the highest tech guys, when, when they're really honest, you get them off the side, you go, okay. So this robotic thing, like what's really going to happen to employment? They go, it will shift employment at some level, but the fact of the matter is, is human beings will become more important than they've ever been before. Right? Even the highest tech guys. Okay? But these are game-changing things. Now, first and foremost, I know and you know the economy is the tip of the spear. Always. Always. So, there's, and I'm not really an economist, but let me share the one thing I have, have heard from the macro economy world that I listen to every single day and think about every single day there are more people inside that circle than outside of it. That's really important. There are more people inside that circle than outside of it. And the fastest growing population by percentage of middle class citizens is inside that circle. And people in the middle class, as they rise in economic fortune, what do they always do, regardless of culture, regardless of history? They upgrade their diet. We cannot afford to not have access to that space. We've got to have access. It's the only way that my kids will be able to have a thriving ranching business that involves cattle. Now, we can create a thriving ranching business that involves recreation without access to that. But if we want to have cattle, we've got to have access to that. Big data. Um, this is real, right? We are able today to throw an amazing amount of information into the cloud and to use really powerful analytics to get at information, right? Um, at, uh, uh, in Nebraska, I've met a guy in the music theory program, and he's actually using music theory to find patterns in data because we can find the patterns easier with music than statistics. Because music and statistics, music is really mathematics, right? Because it's patterns of things. Right? If you think about music, it's really a pattern. So we're going to merge really interesting spaces in this new realm, right? What we know about DNA, you know, um, changing the speed of our information.